Welcome, folks, to another edition of Our City Matters. Today we have Glenn Willett with us. And he's the, the independent candidate for mayor for the city of Manchester. Uh, the primary is in September. So once you get back from vacation, you'll be thinking about going and vote. So welcome, Glenn, to Thank our show. Thank you for having me. And I have you because I, I want to bring out the issues that you feel are important. And I want you to tell us how y you are different than the other establishment candidates and, and how you will do well for the city of Manchester. Thank you. You're welcome. So we can start with, uh, you, you, I guess you had a fundraiser this or an event this week, past weekend. And I had an event, yes. You had a good turnout. About 84 people. And did they ask questions? They asked questions and uh, in multiple languages, and we had people to respond immediately, not 10 days later or you never get an answer. Oh, did you have interpreters? We had interpreters. Oh, great. That will be a difference. If I become your next mayor, I will represent you, the people, not the special interests. When you come to the city hall and you speak your three minutes, I will make sure that within, 72, within 48 to 72 hours, that I will get you the answer to your questions. If not, I will meet with you personally. We will talk about resolving the issues. When we have public comment here in the city for the schools board and for the automatic board, we give our three minutes and we never hear from, hear from them again. That's not solving our problems. And you wonder why we keep coming back with the same issues. Because we don't pay attention to you, the citizens. This is your government. So I will not lip sync or lip service I will do the work that you will elect me to do, and that is to solve the problems and make things happen. Well, that's great, Glenn, and I do believe that you'll do that. And so you are an independent candidate, and in, that's what makes in, you a in different. In a nonpartisan election. And so it's not just Republican and Democrat, but the independents need a voice. And what's so funny is that because... We, we live in a, a city where our charter says that we are nonpartisan elections for the municipal elections, yet the parties will not recognize the independent candidates, which is against city charter. When it comes to debate, I'm not allowed to debate. Why? Because I'm an independent, yet the charter says we're nonpartisan. So I plan to challenge it in the courts so that all the candidates, according to our city charter, which is our constitution here in the city that you people voted for years ago, we, you get to hear all our voices. Right. Now, an issue that's on my mind is the spending cap. You know, we just passed, uh, the city just passed a budget a couple weeks ago, and or last week, and, you know, they, they didn't override the cap this year. But don't let them fool you. They'll do it next year. They're already planning on it. And they can override it with 10 votes. For emergency purposes only. Well, it, doesn't really say emergency purposes, but that's what that's you believe. That's the reason. That's the reason why it was created that way. Okay. That's why it takes 10 votes. For when there is an, emer that's an right. emergency. So the folks don't have to be afraid of the spending cap. No. No, I'll tell you why. Uh, last year, they overrode the spending cap. And by overriding the spending cap, they were supposed to solve our crimes, solve our road construction, solve mm -hmm. our homelessness. What did we do instead? We started closing down parks from 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. because we couldn't save them. They were so dangerous for people to walk in the parks, they closed them. Well, if they were going to hire all these new police officers, why didn't they put more police officers in those parks? To tell the criminals, out you go, and allow the citizens who pay those taxes for the quality of life, allow them to walk our parks. The homelessness, we have a 10-year program, yet we don't adequately fund it. The shelter, they have to leave the shelter at 6 a.m. in the morning. It creates a problem because you're talking three to 400 people who leave those shelters and come into the downtown and take over all where the bus areas are. So if you want to go to work and take a bus and wait for a bus, there's no benches. What I would do is I would fund the shelter 100% so that they would stay in the shelter until 9 a.m. Well, that would be after breakfast, That's really. right. I mean... And that, in ca in that way... You're going to work. It's the same thing as the daycare, the, 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 what they call the daycare center. They almost closed it. The churches are coming together to fund it. 
because the city will not fund it. Yet they're receiving funding for that stuff. By the way, Charlie Sherman got thirty-five thousand dollars to fund the shelter. He needed a hundred. And now that should tell you a reason why we don't solve the problem. We need to put these people back on their feet. We just don't want to wear them in a warehouse and feed them and clothe them. You want to educate them to go out to look for work so they can afford their, if they make money, they can afford to have their own rent. All of a sudden, they don't need the shelter. Uh, they spend money instead of costing us money. Uh, there's less crime because their, their, their times are filled in the daytime and doing like everybody else does, working eight-hour shift. So that's what we need to do. Just housing someone doesn't help people. Warehousing them, right? Yes. Um, I know we had a little conversation about studio apartments in Manchester. Now, obviously, if you're a single person. That's all you need. And you're, you're supporting yourself, and you just need a shelter over your head, and you want to pay for it yourself and not have to be at, mm -hmm. at uh, the city shelter. Um, but we have some ordinances, or yeah, we have some ordinances that, in, in that, that, that the Board of Mayor and Alderman have created in the last few years. That don't allow. They don't studios? allow for studios, and it's it's a shame. I will tell you why it's a shame, because if I live by myself and I can't afford a thousand dollars a month for a two or three bedroom apartment, which I don't need anyway. Even a one bedroom apartment is that's what, right seven eight hundred. Yes, well, I, but I can afford a studio, then I'm not homeless anymore. Right. I have a studio, and. It's, we, we are not a progressive city when we do stuff like that. We don't allow the young people to stay in our city. A lot of young people are single. Right. And so they want to come to work here, but there's no place for them to live affordably. So in my administration, I would tweak those, those ordinances to allow studios to be built within our city. Studio apartments. Yes. Right? I mean, obviously, these big buildings, sometimes they can, you know, um, divide them up into smaller units, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I you know, Deb, I know I know some uh, developers here in the city that would love to build one, two, three bedroom apartments and studios in one building. Right. But we can't have our studios, and it's it's really a shame because it would make our city much more whole. Mm -hmm. You cannot I exclude people because they're living here by themselves. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. They have right. to live somewhere. If you want them to work here, then they need to live somewhere. And you don't just want professionals. No. You just can't have a city of professionals who are making the money to afford these uh, very, exorbitant rents. Very good point. In a city of 110,000, or by the way, 132,000 when the kids are when college kids are here. That's a, quite a markup, mm. which spends millions in our cities in the nine months that they're here. And they're looking for housing as and well. And they're looking for housing. And whenever we want to build them housing, we say no. Well, we're not going to get more colleges, and they're not going to spend money here if they can't come here. They can't, we can't, they can't survive here. So we need to change our ways, and we live in a city that, for us to have more jobs, we need people to, cre to work in those jobs, and those are our young people. Mm -hmm. So if we don't let them live in our city freely, openly like everybody else does, and allow them to have a life here like everybody else does. With a studio will, apartment if they choose to have a right. studio until, until they you know, find another person to share their life with or get married, have kids. So if we make it difficult yeah. for young people to stay in the city, there will be no jobs. There will be no young people either. That's right. Because people who want to create jobs, the manufacturers, for example, the, even the high tech, if there's nobody to take those jobs, they'll go somewhere else. Right. Well, and the other thing is, I mean, parents don't want their their young people living in their basements forever. And a lot of parents don't want their children to be, actually leave, leave the nesting ground but not leave the city. To leave, to stay with the, where right. the family lives. And, yeah, exactly. Well, that, when we had that conversation, I was pretty interested in, you know, that in your viewpoint there and maybe how you can change the ordinances to, I was probably just change it and add the word studio that is allowed. It is so easy. And <laughs> the ultimate is the board vote and the changes are made. Right. Exactly. Instead of arguing, no, we can't have studios. And why not? It would improve our city. Right. And it would give, it would, it would take away some of the homelessness. Exactly. Exactly. Because they do earn, they can maybe get a job and after they learn some skills, some computer skills, maybe, maybe they have rooms at uh, New Horizons that they can, you know, teach them how to do computer skills and teach them how to do. Uh, they do that now to an extent. Work I would, skills. I would increase that by finding the program. I would increase that to. 
advance it a little faster to get them out there to, 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 right. to, to get a job. So they're not just hanging out on the street all day. They're That's actually right. improving themselves That's with right. some, some workforce skills. You know, skills. Deb, a lot of them want to improve themselves. We don't give them the skills to do that. If we do that, we'll become a better city. You just can't give them breakfast, lunch, and dinner and say, hey. And sleep. And sleep, yeah. I mean, that's not going to solve the issue. That's the warehousing uh, attitude right. or mentality, which is not my mentality at all. You have to make things happen. If it means to tweak an ordinance that will benefit our community and this would, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. Right. I appreciate that, Glenn. I'm, you know, so I'm looking forward to when you have your signs ready and then we can start putting the lawn signs out. And when does that happen? Uh, as soon as we sign up. So uh, July 13th to July 24th, so if anybody here who wants to run for office, uh, for mayor, school board, alderman, uh, uh, welfare commissioner, those offices are all available. You register between the 13th, Monday the 13th of July till Friday the 24th. Mm -hmm. But please, they close at 5 p.m. on Friday. Don't bring your application in at, at 5 o'clock. No, it won't get in. At mm -hmm. least get there between 4 and 4.30. Right. But I, I suggest that if you have an idea to change the city, run for it. Exactly. That's democracy. And then get in touch with me, and you can be on my show, and you can let the folks know what your ideas are. There you go. For the city. Um, there's all there's alderman slots that are open. There's school board slots that will be open. So. I think this year you're going to find a lot of independent voters that have decided to come up to the plate, and they're going to run for office. The candidates, yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And that, that in itself will bring out you know, a lot of the independents don't vote, and you ask him why, and he said, well, we have no choices. It's either Democrat or Republican. And we became independents because we didn't like neither of the parties. Right. Well, our city says we're nonpartisan. You have that choice. And don't allow the parties to rule you. F let them follow. Let them. I was told by a lady at one of my shows a couple weeks ago, she called, and she says, that if I don't confirm to the parties, I'll never have a voice in this city. Excuse me? The charter says that they need to conform to the charter. Conform, right. If I, have, if I have to conform illegally, why am I running? It's a bad start. No, I mean, you have a right to be independent. That's right. Uh, so we have, uh, well, I guess we get back to crime and poverty. I mean, these are issues. We have a new police chief and an assistant chief now that's been uh, declared. And, uh, and who's the assistant chief? Well, I forgot his name now, but... Yeah, you got we one just up on declared me. on the news this morning. <laughs> but I'm very happy with, uh, uh, with, with Chief Willard. And uh, he's already made something. He's already made a change from the last administration that I'm very happy about. And that is we have a lot of police officers that uh, are in other cities that have retired. And they would like to work part-time. And they would move to Manchester. And we need part-time officers. And so because they have tattoos, not because they have a criminal background, because they have tattoos, they're not allowed to be officers. He's changed that. He's loosened it up. And, and that's good because if you were an officer, in, let's say, in Boston for the last 20 years and you did your job well, why would we not want them here? Because right. of a tattoo? Right. It doesn't make sense to me. Again, we need to be more progressive. We're going to improve our city. We need to allow people to live their lives. It's not always, you're always in my bedroom or you're always in my face. Government does things better when they do lease. They're supposed to provide a service that is needed for the entire community, not just for a certain section. You will find in my administration special interests out the window. I don't believe in special interests. I believe in voting for issues that will solve the majority of our problems in this city. And if you only vote to satisfy the special interests, we lose. And that's why our issues aren't being solved today. Right. I think the people need a bigger voice. And, you know, it's funny how you say that because what I want to do as mayor is take away some of the powers that your aldermen have and give it back to you. For example, when there's an aldermanic meeting and you speak your three minutes, you get a response within 48 to 72 hours, which you don't now. Solve that problem. At the public hearings for your budgets, whatever other public hearings you have for the schools and the cities, you will be allowed to ask questions. After all, you're paying the money. You're paying the bills. You can ask a question and we'll get you an answer if we don't have one. Mm. As of today, we have a, a government that doesn't let you allow you to ask questions on a total budget of over 379 million or 374 million between the two budgets. So 
over a $300 million budget and you can't ask a question and where your money's going? At the hearing, the budget hearing you're talking about. Yeah, here. that's nonsense. Yeah. Well, I know your sign says 32 neighborhoods. Yes. And, and one city government. I guess in, in the past there used to be 32 neighborhoods. Uh, walk, uh, watch groups in each neighborhood. There was actually there was 36. And now we're down to about three or four that are active. And what I want to do is recreate at least one neighborhood watch per neighborhood at 32. And I'll tell you why. When they had that in the early 2000s, it worked. People were watching. You watched. I watched you. I, if you're not home, I'm, I'm your neighbor. I'm going to look out for your home. And vice versa. If I go on vacation, you're going to look out for my home. Yeah, we need to get to know our neighbors. That's right. When I moved into where I am today, I, yeah, I introduced myself. You know, I said, hi, I'm your new neighbor. And, uh, you know, I'm here to be friendly. I'm here to be, in, be neighborly. I'm, and I'm a strong believer in block parties because block parties bring the entire block of neighborhood of a neighborhood. And, uh, and you get to know your neighbors that night. Mm -hmm. You have a band, you have a potluck supper, and you talk about the issues. By the way, when I go out to campaign in these 32 neighborhoods, and I will let you know when I do, I will set aside a half hour to 45 minutes in each event for you to ask me questions on your issues in your neighborhood so that mm -hmm. we can solve them. You know, it's, it, it's, it's nice to have an alderman in each ward and two at large, same thing with the school board, but it's also better to meet with the neighbors because these neighborhoods don't always have the same issue as the other wards or other neighborhoods do. Mm -hmm. And so we need to do more in communicating with you, the citizens, our public. After all, that's why you elect us for, yet it's not being done that way. Not necessarily. I mean, some, some aldermen have a ward meeting you yeah, know, at one of the schools. And, uh, Remember when Mayor Gatsis became mayor, he used to have a ward meeting once a month. And he hasn't done that for years. It's not important anymore, is it? It mm. should be. Mm. It will be. In my case, I will do it. I will also have a TV show, uh, either, either on public access or on the government channel, two hours every week, where you people will be able to call in the station and ask questions. And our, my secretary would write them down and we'll give you an answer within 72 hours. That, if I can't give you an answer, we'll get one. That's how we it's make communication. things happen. It's called communication. Exactly. And if we can't communicate and, and bring our ideas together, and, you know, like maybe someone has an idea for something, like, like I have an idea for a footbridge over Queen City Avenue connecting the um, rail trail. And that's another story, the rail trail. Actually, but, we have one. Well, the right. across America. Right, um, when, you, when you come from Rite Aid and you're heading uh, west on Queen City Avenue, they want to extend the rail trail. Yes. And, but you can't cross that road. It's four lanes. You're right. And it's, it's just have, very dangerous. They need to have a, a, a traffic light for walkers where you press the button. You can't be stopping the traffic every time someone wants to ride their bike across. So... I mean, well, then so we're there talking is, either underground or overground. Yes. I should have brought a picture, but, but there is one in Nashua. I've seen it. And on, uh, on Henry Burke Highway, and it goes from Manchester Street over to the uh, Penichuk Junior High. And it doesn't stop the traffic. It doesn't stop the traffic. It's handicap accessible. It's a beautiful walking bridge. And so I think that should be a model, and I did have the, um, the Public Works uh, Recreation Parks and Rec person, Mr. Uh, Pennard, on my show, and we discussed that, and he's going to look into it. So citizens have great ideas, and we just need to communicate That's right. and feel like we're going to be listened to. Yeah, your voices need to be heard, and right now they're not, with this government, they're not being heard. With me, you will hear me. I will hear, you, I will hear your voice loud and clear, and I will do something about it. Tell us some of the things that you've gotten done in the city. I know people have said, well, Glenn, he gets things done. Well, I remember that a tractor trailer on Bridge Street, crossing the bridge from the west side to the east side, hit a pothole so big that it was down to the rim of the steel of the bridge. Oh my goodness. And it didn't just give him a flat of the tractor trailer, it ruined the rim. And for three months, I asked for the pothole to be filled. And yeah, they filled it, but because the pothole was so big, it didn't, it didn't last. Finally, I said, you know what? I bring it up to the Board of Mayor and Alderman, and I did that for three months, and finally they got the word, you know, we need to fix it. So they fixed the problem, not just fill up the hole. And now the problem is solved. For example, on the corner of 
the end of Bridge Street going west, uh, off the bridge to the west side, where by CMC, that whole block area on uh, Eddie Road uh, was uh, so many potholes that they couldn't control it. So I suggested that they tear down about an inch of that old tar and find out where the water problem is, fix it, and then tar it. And they did that in August, and now the road has been solved. Yet for months they've been patching and patching. We're wasting our money. Right. And, uh, I mean, have they opened the bathrooms yet at <laughs> Veterans Park? It's funny how you say that. <laughs> uh, for over a year now, I've been fighting to have those bathrooms back open because they need it as a service and you're paying taxes for it. They opened them uh, Sunday the 6th, yet someone had to pay a lot of money to get in. And they opened them the following Monday at another event. Again, they paid for it. Now, here's the problem. If you're a taxpayer, and you are in your case, you own a home, and you're paying for that service, and someone rents the park, Veterans Park, and that service is supposed to come with it, but you've got to pay extra. Why are you paying extra? You've already paid for it once through your taxes. Yep. Well, everyone's a taxpayer. All those who oh, are yeah, renting. Even, even the renters, that's right. Because all the taxes that the landlord is paying is included in the rent. Absolutely. When they say you're not, you're not a taxpayer, that's not true. You are a taxpayer. Your rent goes up accordingly. And everyone should be concerned because as the taxes rise, if we don't keep the spending cap and if we don't have politicians that we elect that respect the spending cap, then we will be, you know, taxed out of our homes. And the renters also won't be able to stay renting in Manchester. Hmm. And that can happen. And, and you know what's going to we'd, we'd be like another city like Detroit. Yeah, which I and, don't want. And other cities that are deteriorating. And I'm sure people have seen this Manchester deteriorate over the years of uh, Mayor Gatz's um, administration. One of the problems that we have, Deb, is that, for example, that uh, uh, we live in a city of roughly 98 nationalities, 82 languages in our high schools. We need to uh, treat people alike. We are a city of one. We may have 32 neighborhoods, 12 12 wards, 98 nationalities, but we are a city of one. If you treat me the same way as I treat, as they treat you, we'll become a better city. And when the mayor talks a lot about a city of one, it doesn't work. His city of one doesn't work because we are not a city of one. We're not treated, treated the same. And it makes more prosperity, what's the word? Prosperity. Prosperity in our, within our city. We get along a lot better. Uh, for example, uh, in a city of 110,000 or more, you can't just have high tech because you have all kinds of service. You need people to, run, to work in the restaurants, in the hotel business, highway, you know, all kinds of jobs. So you can't just have high tech. As much as I love high tech, I want more high tech, but you can't just have 100% high tech. If you have a diverse tech. population, you have to have diverse jobs. That's right. So for us to create more jobs in this city, we need to go out and look for them. But we can't do that if we can't even provide them housing for people that are single. Right. For example. Well, this was part two. I guess we had part one a couple months ago mm -hmm. for uh, your update on your campaign. So soon your website will be up. By the end of June. By the time we do part three. And July 14th will be my big kickoff, and I hope you all show up at City Hall Plaza from 6 to 9 o'clock, and I think you will be impressed. What day is that? It's on a Tuesday night because City Hall is open till 8 o'clock that night. We're all going to go into City Hall. I'm going to register. Walk back out, and right there in the plaza, we'll have our event. And what was that date again? July the 14th. That's Tuesday night from 6 to 9. Okay, July 14th. And it'll be done in multiple languages. Right. We'll have okay. interpreters and mm -hmm. city of one. And you'll have some, like a jumbo screen with some yes, information. My, and my vision will come out. Uh, there'll be music. some music. And there'll even be a movie, one that we created ourselves about this vision of our, of our, of our city. Yeah. Well, that's good, Glenn. And so we're looking forward to seeing the progress over the summer. Because remember, after you return from vacation or from summertime, we're in the voting mode. We're in the voting, we're in the voting mode. And we need to get our signs on our lawns and, uh, and start getting excited about moving the city forward. My sign should be out by the end of July. So if you want one, you'll be able to call me. Some, are, some call me way back in January. It's just mm -hmm. too early. It was still snow on the ground. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for having me. All right. So I, I think uh, we're going to wrap this up. You have a phone number. 
289-6835. You'll be able to re reach me at the end of June. My website will be willetformaire.com. And you can now reach me at queencityexaminer at gmail.com. And I'm considering in opening up an email just for the campaign. Sure. That'd be nice. And uh, so people can send you their questions, and, and we'll announce that on the show here And again. by the end of this month, I will have PayPal. We'll teach you how to get on there. Mm -hmm. So if you want to contribute, it'll be very easy. Right. So, folks, you know, I have Glenn on my show because I feel like if we just keep voting the same types of people in as mayor, we get the same results. And I think this city needs a different result. So that's why I appreciate Glenn. And, and he knows so much about the inner workings of the city. Um, I mean, you know about the homeless problem. You, you know about the businesses the problems have, uh, I mean, the, the problems that the businesses have. And like the snow removal in the wintertime and the businesses can't operate, they, their revenues go down because the snow banks aren't taken away and things like that. That shouldn't be. No, it wasn't years ago. I couldn't believe these snow banks and, and blocking emergency exits, you know, and it's just like it's crazy. So Chaos. I, I think you'll get things done. I think things will change and for the better. And then two years later, if you don't like my administration, you have a choice to get me out of office. That's only two years. <laughs> One thing I would make a commitment, though, I will not do more than two terms, which is four years. That's all I want. Mm -hmm. A lot of changes can happen in four years. And so I, I think we need to give it a go with an independent candidate. And I think Glenn Willett is, is the candidate. So anyway, okay. folks, we'll be hearing a lot more about campaigning over the next few months. And I just wanted to give you a preview. Again, remember Glenn Willett as before you go away for the summer and be with us again um, in September. You know, if you go back, the, go away the whole summer, uh, you'll be out of touch. But we'll, uh, we'll catch back up uh, in September. All right, Glenn, we'll see you next time. We'll be part three. And thank th you very much. Thank you so much for being. Oh, did you have something to say here? Or uh, well, real quick? It's just one of my. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. Okay. You Sorry, I almost it? forgot that. We'll let for mayor change to reform city government, believe in something better. A people's mayor. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time when Our City Matters. Take care. Thank you. Bye.